Okay, I'm going to have a brief discussion about uh, microphone wiring and specifically uh, with electronic or relay switching. I think uh, this is something that confuses a lot of people. Um, I don't want to say they make it more complicated than it is, but that seems to be, you know, from, from my perspective, that's the kind of the impression I get. I understand if you're not familiar with electronics, um, sometimes you would think something as simple as wiring a microphone would be simple, and it can turn into a nightmare for some people. You know, my ra I plug the mic in, the radio squeals, it's, you know, I'm trying to talk into yeah, it. You get all kinds of problems, you wire your microphones wrong. So I want to cover what's the difference between relay and electronic switching. So most people are familiar with modern radios. So this would be, you know, pretty much any, the majority of your solid state radios. Now, not all of them. Some, a lot of your older solid state radios used relay switching as well. But uh, for, you know, modern radios, they're all electronic switching. So what's that mean? So inside your radio, uh, so we'll use some of the more modern radios people are familiar with that, you know, might be, you know, if you're familiar with export radios or galaxies and radios like that. Some radios you'll notice that if without the microphone plugged in, you have audio. You can hear the receive signal. While other radios, if the microphone is not plugged into the radio, there's no sound coming out of your speaker. So some of those need uh, the receive circuit switched so you can actually have receive audio. So what they, inside the microphone, you'll usually have, it'll, you're always going to have at least one set of switch contacts, some two, some even three, for, you know, we get into power mics and stuff like that. But you'll usually have, um, pretty much all mics are going to have a shield wire. So, you know, they'll represent that on a schematic, you're on the diagrams, like, like these, you know, these are some original A-static, you know, paperwork. But they'll usually represent that at the, you know, the cord end as being like that. And then they'll show wires coming out of it. So your shield, that's this outer wrapping. And it's usually going to be around the white wire on your microphone. So you'll have a white wire comes out of that. And when you talk into your mic, that's the wire that the audio is going to come out of, is that white wire. And this shield wire that's wrapped around it, it does just that. It shields the audio line from any interference getting into it, especially when you're doing radio communications, you're going to have a lot of RF energy, you know, in the surrounding area, so that helps to prevent RF feedback into the audio line. Now, inside your microphone, a lot of times they'll have the uh, white wire will ground when it's in receive. Um, that's so you don't get, because depending how radios are wired, you can get f feedback <laughs> You can get weird problems if the microphone cartridge is, is basically what I'd call hot in receive. So a lot of times inside the radio, they'll have one set of switch contacts that the only purpose it serves is to actually ground that, that white wire to the shield. Because that shield inside your radio usually goes to your chassis or the, to the circuit board or DC ground. So, but the actual switching. So in schematics, you'll often see they'll have, like, this one has three sets of switches, okay? So, you know, this is a TGP A-static stand. But, you know, like I say, they can have different amounts. Some will have one, some will have two, some will have three. You can have several different sets of switches, and each one of those is a separate switch. But they're all actuated. That's why they have this big bar across the top. They're all actuated together at the same time. So, you, you, when you push this bar... It pushes all three of those center contacts over, so it switches from making contact here, here, and here, to here, here, and here. Now, there's no connection. This is no electric. This is not an electrical connection. That's just a, basically, think of that as a piece of plastic. That's just the rod that's actuating all three of those switches at the same time. So, you'll have the main difference between electronic and relay switching, and if you're familiar with A-statics, um, You'll often, when you wire the microphones, you'll notice you have to put the blue wire at the mic plug end. So, you know, when you're, when you're putting your wire, when you're attaching it to the plug, um, you'll often notice if you, you know, dismantle this plug, you'll see that the, inside the mic plug that the blue wire is attached to the same pin that the shield is. And the reason for that is that's for electronic switching. 
because inside the microphone, actually if we just look at the schematic here, get this so it's good and in focus, there we go. So you can see here's the blue wire. Okay, it just goes to the center or the common on one of those switches. And then you have a black and a blue, or not blue, a red wire. Now this microphone stand also has a Vox switch, and what the Vox does is it deactivates the actual tr uh, transmit switching. So if you were to you know, slide that little switch over, that way the push to talk button no longer keys the radio. It's actually using the Vox circuit in the radio. But let's ignore that. So here's one set of switch contacts. So like I say, normally in the radio or in the mic plug-in, what you'll see is in the majority for when you're wiring, let's say, this microphone for a modern radio, in your mic plug, you would have this blue wire would connect down to this shield. So inside the radio, you know, the blue and the shield go together. And that way when you push, you know, when you're not pushing the radio, the, the push-to-talk button, it's attached to the black. So that's the receive. And that switches the radio over to receive. So in some radios, it will actually be your audio so that's grounding the speaker inside your radio. And then when you push push your push to talk button, this contact slot you know, swings over and makes contact with the red wire. Okay? Now if you didn't have that blue wire attached, the switch isn't really doing anything because this the center contact or the common is not not connected to anything. So that's why you have to have that connected. Now in relay switching, inside of the radio in relay when you hear somebody talking about older radios, especially tube types and a lot of the early solid state radios, the microphone, you don't want this blue wire attached to the shield. If you do, weird things can happen. Squealing sounds, as soon as you plug the mic in, it goes into transmit. You can get all kinds of weird problems. Greatly depends on what radio you're plugging it into. But the reason for that is, inside of your radio, there's actually a relay. Okay? And you're attached to the core, you know, this is the, the windings of the, the relay coil, okay? And it'll have uh, voltage, either voltage or ground, applied on, you know, one pin of that relay. So you've got a relay with contacts over on this side. But you're, what you're doing is, is you're actually controlling either the ground or the power to that. So, you know, it may have positive voltage to it, and then the other wire would come over to your microphone. Or this could be negative. And the actual positive power, the positive voltage to energize that relay is supplied from the microphone. So inside the microphone, what you're doing is, is you're only going to use two of these wires. You're not going to attach the blue to the shield. Because what you want is, is a separate switch that's isolated from everything else. So you would have the blue attached to one pin and the red attached to one pin on your microphone. So a lot of times in, in uh, radios... You'll see, or if you look at the, look it up online, you'll see stuff like pin 1 audio, pin 2 shield, and on older radios you might see, you know, 3 is hot, and 4 is return. And that's what really confuses people. Where modern radios, when you look at it, you'll normally have something like one audio, two shield. Now these can be in any order, but just for demonstration purposes, you know, and three would be, let's say, receive, and four is transmit. Now, inside the, micro inside the microphone, you have to remember the shield for, re for uh, your modern electronic switching that's why they have this blue wire attached to the shield, okay? And then when you switch between receive and transmit, that's this switch here is either grounding the black wire or it's grounding the red wire. So that's all you're doing. You're switching the shield is either going to ground the receive or the transmit pins at your mic plug. And that's what switches the ra internally the radio to receive or transmit. Well, like I say, old radios that used relay switching... This is what I think confuses a lot of people, is this hot PTT or return, or you'll just have two of them that'll just be labeled PTT. There won't be any hot or return, it'll just say just that. It might say audio, shield, and PTT on two of them. That's because all that wants to see across pins, let's say, three and four in this example, 
is just a switch. It does not want to see a ground because what you're doing is is you're completing the path. Okay, so a lot of times, let's say in this example, you'd have positive voltage here. You know, inside the radio is being po there's a positive being supplied to it, and so you have two wires come out of the radio for your hot and return. And let's say this is the mic plug. Let's just for purpose of this demonstration, let's say that little black box now is the actual backside of your microphone plug. So you would have a, two wires that come out of the radio. There's you know a ground inside the radio that'll come out to let's say pin three, and then the other one would go to pin four. And what you're doing is when you push the push to talk button then on this isolated switch right here is you're completing the circuit so the relay can ground, energize, and put the radio into transmit. Or it can be vice versa. That's why a lot of the old radios, you'll find voltage at the microphone socket. Um, and you have to be careful. On some of the old tube radios, you might have 110 volts <laughs> DC at the, at the microphone socket. Uh, so there can be high voltage at the, the microphone socket. And in that case, what they would have wouldn't be a ground. They would have the positive voltage here. And then inside the radio, it wouldn't be positive. They just have the other side of the relay would go to ground inside the radio. But what you're doing is is switching that positive voltage comes into the microphone, you know, into your plug, goes to one of the one of those two pins, either the blue or the red. Then when you push the switch, you know, push your push to talk button, that voltage can then be supplied through the through this contact back to the relay. To energize the relay which switches the radio over like i say it's the old radios i think is what really confuse people in that blue wire especially in the a statics that blue wire seems to be confusing for some people so it's as a general rule of thumb the blue wire in a statics just gets attached to the shield inside your microphone plug if it's a modern radio if it's an old radio that uses relay switching it will not the blue wire and the shield will not go together the blue wire will probably go to one pin, another, you know, another pin in the microphone, and then the red or transmit wire will then go to another another pin, you know, like in this case here. And that's what you're doing. You're just using just the switch contacts. You don't want to supply a ground inside the for those contacts. Um, so especially in, in a case like this, if you had 110 volts DC coming out here and then you had the other side, you accidentally left the blue wire hooked up to ground, well, now you just shorted out 110 volts straight to ground. And, yeah, weird things can happen inside your radio to include smoke, <laughs> which you don't want to see come out of your radio. So, like I say, there's, and there's no, all, there's so many microphones, so many different types. I mean, like I say, you know, here's just a few examples. You can see here's another one, but basically the same thing. You have, you know, a static, you have black, blue, and red. The blue wire goes to a center contact. The black is the one that's hooked up in receive. Anytime you're not pushing the button, then when you do push the button, it comes the center contact comes over and makes contact here, which is the red wire. Uh, the yellow usually is not used except in some special applications, but then the other two common ones you'll see used are the white and the shield. The white's going to be your audio and the shield. That comes in, goes to a common tie point, supplies the ground for the amplifier board, and you know, lots of other circuits. Like I say, it greatly depends on the radio. Now there are other mics that you don't need to rewire. Um, some of those would be turners. Turners, uh, one, I personally like turners myself. I'm a, I'm a turner guy. Um, They have very frequently a lot of those microphones will have a little switch inside or on the bottom of the microphone. Matter of fact, if you give me just a second, I can grab one off the shelf here. Uh, let's find one that has it. Uh, so I'm going to grab a half. Uh, there we go. Here's one that has it. So here's a plus three. Okay, and if you notice on the back side, there's a little switch here. Swing this battery retaining strap out of the way, and you can see it says either electronic or relay. Nice thing about these microphones is you can just reach under here and 
flip that little button back and forth. And what you're doing is basically is disconnecting the ground from the switching circuit, and you're just using the switching contacts. So it's really important when you get a radio or a microphone, and you're the first time you're hooking it up, do a little bit of studying. Um, find the connection. So, you know, go online, find how they tell you the mic plug on the radio is supposed to be hooked up. So let's say, you know, audio shield, receive, transmit, or, you know, in this example, audio shield, hot push to talk, and return push to talk. Once you have that information, the next really important thing you need to do is, is get a copy of the owner's manual for your microphone. Um, they're pretty much all available online. You know, just do a little bit of searching. Um, you know, I've got a folder here. I've got you know, a whole book I've made up just on Turner's. I have a lot of the original paperwork for microphones. I've got, you know, pretty much you name the mics. I've got the, you know, even Mira microphones. So, you know, got this. There's another A Static 636s. Here's, God, this is Super X. I mean, there's all kinds of info to be found online. Um, but like I say, it's important to find out how your microphone, not just the radio, but how, and not the plug, but how the actual microphone itself is actually wired. Because like I say, the main thing you want to find out is, is the one of those wires coming out of your, you know, coming out of your cord, you know, out this cord here, other than the shield, does it need to be grounded or is it attached to a ground inside the microphone? You know, or like I say, in a case of this microphone, it can be disconnected without having to rewire anything. It's just a matter of flipping that switch disconnects the ground or makes it in contact. So like I say, there's a little bit of research. Don't just, I know so many people get a radio. Uh, they look, the radio has a four pin mic. They grab a mic. This one's a good example got a four pin plug and they go oh well that's going to work it's got the right plug on the end they plug it in and weird or nasty things happen you get strange noises coming out of your radio when it's received or as soon as you plug the mic in it goes to transmit because um, there are so many ways to wire a four pin mic plug you, you may think well there's only four pins how many combinations can there be trust me there can be a shitload depending on if it's relay electronic switching because, you know, your audio could be on any one of these four pins. The shield could be on any one of these four pins. In electronic switching, the receive could be on any of the four. The transmit could be on any of the four. If it's relay switching, same thing. Audio could be on any, receive on, or the shield on any, and then you're going to have two switch contacts that could be on any of them. Or you have five pin mic plugs. I mean, like I say, there's a gauntlet, but, you know, there's so many different ways to wire a four pin plug, you know, so a lot of people mistakenly think that up's oh, four pin, it's got to work. Not necessarily, you re really need to check. And unfortunately, a lot of people have gotten into the microphones. So if you get a microphone of, uh, from unknown origins, I guess you could say, and you don't know if somebody's been inside of this thing, I highly recommend you at least take the bottom of it off and check and look if it and see if it looks like someone has been doing a lot of soldering on the switch contacts inside the microphone. Because I see a lot of people get confused about the wiring on the outside, and then they completely rewire the switches on the inside and screw it up. I've seen it on Turner's and Astatics, um, where the wires that would normally be the wire colors coming out of the mic, which are standardized for Turner or for Astatic, they're no longer the standardized color because someone hooked them up inside the microphone completely wrong. So, um, if you have an ohm meter, that's an easy way to, you know, check switch contacts. So, you know, you can put your hook up to the shield, push the button, see if the ground is switching between two pins. But, uh, yeah, it, is, it, it can be a whole lot more complicated than uh, you would think. And it can also be a whole lot simpler. And like I say, the simplest thing that I think confuses so many people is relay and electronic switching inside radios. So... Uh, and the A-statics, that blue wire, seems to be the uh, a sticking point for a lot of people that don't really know what to do with that blue wire. It's, like I say, in general, usually the blue wire gets attached to the shield inside the mic plug for electronic switching, and it does not in relay switching. The blue wire goes to one pin, and then you would have the red going to the other one, because that's your switch contact. So when you 
you know, push the push the talk button, it's it's allowing the relay to either be grounded or have its voltage supplied to it, so the real the actual mechanical relay inside the radio can be switched. So I hope this you know helps a little bit with clearing it up. Um, the reason I did this video was I recently was trying to explain that to somebody. They were having problems trying to hook up a microphone. I was trying to explain what that blue wire, that mystery blue wire is in the A static mics, and you know. I said you need to unhook the blue wire from the shield inside the mic plug, slide it over to, in his case, I think it was pin 2, and then the other switch contact, the, the red wire, went to like pin 3 in his. I think it was, 1 was audio, 2 and 3 were the switching, and 4 was the ground for the microphone cartridge, or the shield. But, uh, like I say, do a little bit of research before you buy, you know, when you buy a radio, um, and some, especially if you buy some unknown microphone, do a little bit of research first before you rush rush in to, uh, you know, uh, hooking stuff up. And like I say, the old radios, yeah, you, there is a possibility you could screw something up. Because like I say, some old radios have up to 110 volts DC coming out, out the, through the mic plug. So just be careful. And modern radios. There's another problem is a lot of these modern radios, if you have like an 8-pin mic plug you might have 13.8 volts out of the, the mic socket. And that's used either for an amplifier that's built into the microphone. It can be for channel, uh, you know, controlling a channel up-down buttons, other features, Bluetooth microphones. Um, you know, if you have, uh, like, the Bearcat radios, you know, unit and Bearcats, you can get these nifty little guys. Completely 100% wireless microphone. It's got a battery, you know, inside of it. Um, the, the radio has, there's a, there's a voltage source at that microphone socket in the, in the modern Bearcat radios. So, cause that's what the cradle for this thing hooks up into, which is, you know, has a receiver transmitter in it. And then there's a receiver and transmitter inside of this that's, you know, Bluetooth. So like I say, just, you, you need to be careful, do a little bit of research. Don't just rush into plugging any old mic into any old radio and expect it to work because, uh, you might take a perfectly good work in radio and possibly do some damage to it because I have seen that happen before. 